everybody welcome back to voice for men india guess who's with us today of course you have seen her you have seen her on television debates you have seen her on twitter you have seen her on other social media platforms sanjukta basu welcome sanjukta thank you thank you for so, having me here thanks for the ones who don't know sanjukta she is a journalist author a feminist research scholar and uh, she's just recently completed her phd in women studies uh, where her research topic is about women's political space on the internet and gender trolling now many of you would be wondering why do we have sanjukta on a men's rights platform i mean we are so diverse you know i mean we as in people who are supporting the men we keep you know talking about feminism how bad feminism has become and obviously from the other side uh, you know uh, the the women and the feminists you know also keep talking about how misogynist the uh, the, the whole twitter spaces and how people uh, you know are so judgmental about women but amongst all these things we are here to actually discuss whether this whole thing is about women's rights versus men's rights do we really need to have this kind of gender war or there can be a middle ground that could be found to address a balance in society so first let me begin with asking you sanjukta uh of course i as a woman for me feminism uh the way i perceived it was very very different for me feminism was always about empowering women to you know let us stand on our feet to be independent not to be dependent on anyone but today somehow the whole idea of feminism is shifting and when i say shifting it has sadly become a lot of male bashing which has been looked at feminism or it has also been looked at you know the freebies which are given to women in the name of women empowerment so first thoughts from you on this okay so uh, you know of course feminism is shifting but then there is no particular definition of feminism so it depends upon what we are looking at when we say feminism is shifting what what is our um, model who are we looking at because feminism uh, is something that started um, basically around you know it's it's been around in around the age of enlightenment Uh, the earliest feminist thoughts in the european context western context came uh, in during the 17th uh, 18th century uh, with the age of enlightenment and then from there we as the world evolved from monarchy to democracy french revolution at the same time women also started talking about their uh, rights as you will remember earliest times when men got the right to have their own government in terms of a democracy and a vote before that we only had there were only monarchy but when the idea of democracy came women did not get a vote so women didn't didn't get a vote uh, women didn't get the right to go to school or own property or you know uh, j- jobs work all of these rights initially uh, women had to struggle and that struggle co- was called feminism that struggle that 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 free uh, that um protest movement for gaining some kind of uh, equality in the society by any group would be is you know is like an ism so and then it became a feminism that that movement was feminism today when somebody says i am a feminist and then does something that is just let's say male bashing or uh, it's just purely uh, you know hating the other gender than men um, and then says that i am doing this in the name of feminism that person is actually doing a disservice to feminism and they're they're um, they're like sort of diluting the the message of feminism but that happens in every field so if i talk about let's say in politi- if i give an example in a political context if i say hindutva groups are all hateful people who hate uh, you know uh, others and muslims and all they want to do is harm the muslims one may say that's not what hindutva is hindutva is just you know a pride in our identity so but there is no one definition of hindutva who is going to be nobody is giving out certificate of hindutva right nobody is giving out certificate of you know this is the right side kind of feminism so because there is no no custodian of the idea any idea therefore gets 
misinterpreted misinformed and then it it sees people obviously will react when they will see that th- that's not what feminism is or that's not what you should be doing in the name of feminism there would be reactions it's obvious but it doesn't have to be a gender war you as you said in the beginning that do we do we have to be a gender war it doesn't have to be a gender war because technically we should all have human rights so uh, let us talk about women's rights particularly in the indian context right now because of course we are focusing more on the country people uh when you say i uh, you know that women did not have rights in the earlier times and there was no education even if they were educated they were not allowed to work i completely agree and i completely buy your point that there was a certain time where uh, you know women were facing these kind of inequalities but today you know if you look at today's times in 2023 Uh, and we are largely looking at kids who were maybe born in late 80s 90s you know who are at the age of marriage now uh most of them have been you know brought up as equals if there is a son and a daughter in the same house you would rarely see today and i'm not talking of only urban areas i'm also talking about a lot of uh, you know the tier 2 tier 3 uh, even the rural areas where today the discrimination between a son and a daughter has marginally reduced so you know i mean now in 2023 and if if you would like to put it that okay we should not term it as men's right we should you know look at it more as equal rights or human rights for everybody do you think uh, you know uh, the women can kind of play the weaker sex when it suits them or you know in we say equal rights it has to be absolutely equal in the true spirit so i'll give you one example now uh, of course uh, you know uh, not really pointing out towards a particular government but if you see most of the governments whether it's the center it's uh, the state governments ruled by you know different parties be bjp congress aap uh, trinamool everybody you know has made it an agenda now whenever they are campaigning they'll come up with some freebies for the women they'll say okay we'll give you 2000 rupees 5000 rupees in your bank account uh you know the most famous uh, gimmick that was started by aap will give you free bus rides now That's this right. is where i have a problem you know because if i am equal to a man i am a fully able woman i have a man traveling with me in the bus he is also fully able both of us are you know at the same level you know i mean if if i'm going somewhere i am not you know physically disabled or i am not somebody who is in any way lesser than the man So what is this whole logic of giving freebies in the name of free bus rides free metro rides and then claiming that oh we don't have equality so th- this is where my main problem lies so what are your thoughts on this yeah. so uh, yeah so you know this i mean of course the whole thing cannot be explained away by few examples but so far as freebies are concerned we all know that freebies are not really that helpful a thing okay unless you change the mindset unless you change Uh, the res- roles and responsibilities specific to our genders what what is expected of a man and what is expected of a of a woman what we call is masculinity femininity the gender constructs just because i was born with a vagina i have to be woman and the woman have to be certain way and just because i was born with a penis i have to be a man and then the man have to be a certain way the man has to be the bread earner the man has to be strong the man cannot uh, you know sit at home while the wife works and the man cannot um, cry men should not cry i mean those things affect the man as well so it uh, gender constructs and these stereotypes they are very very uh, problematic to even for men and they do oppress men also by the way uh, i have always believe said this but so far as freebies by political parties are concerned we all know that they just do this easy this is like an easy thing for them ki ek announce kar diya to you know we'll quickly get vote for that matter the whole ujwala cylinder is seen as a women thing why is the gas and the cooking and the kitchen associated with women why is uchwala cylinder supposed to be something only for women and not for the family or the or the man why can't we imagine a household where uh, it is a single father raising children and cooking and he needs the cylinder so what i'm trying to say is that when political parties announce their schemes and freebies be it even economic schemes saving schemes they do it in the name of 
men they know uh, women they then the same same argument will go for caste uh, based reservations that yes there is a history of oppression and therefore to encourage them to come out and join the workforce you need some kind of incentive that's why you're giving them free bus rides that's why you're giving them because women would not otherwise come out and take a bus go to go to the uh, to go to the you know workplace so let's give them some incentive got it but then should no. be like so but i'm saying that even like let's say even if you want to give it to uh, women who are you know uh, who are not uh, strong or not independent enough i understand but you are putting all women in the same basket right like let's say a woman who is maybe earning say 30 40000 a month and traveling by a bus and it could be in any state whichever is providing them this free transport why should that free uh, ticket be given to that woman i can understand yeah, it's an old person Somebody that's exactly what I say. That's exactly what I say. That there is, there is. I agree. That's exactly what I say. That when political parties make announcements, they are doing it as a vote politics, vote bank politics. They're doing it as a gimmick. Not, but that does not mean that it does not help anybody. There are certainly some sections of women who feel empowered by the idea that okay, I wouldn't have to pay my bus ticket, so I can tell my family that I would go out to get to the. to the class to the tuitions to whatever wherever she wants to go which usually becomes a hindrance in certain uh, sections of society where they will say tumhare jaane aane ke itne kharche lag jate hain hum nahi denge tumhare jaane aane ke kharche bus rides metro rides are costly but the but when the, it happens in the name of women then of course it's a sweeping measure and then entire uh, you know every women will make use of how would you then differentiate will you tell them to give show show you income certificate etc it's it gets complicated so the easy way out for a politician is to just say okay all women but yes we do need nuances we need we need nuances in all of these we need nuances when we talk about see that's you exactly hit the right uh, point the point is that not just in this freebie but in every conversation that we do related to women's empowerment we need nuances we cannot have generalized sweeping ideas and beliefs and statements like you know um, like just because women i mean i'm not a fan of just because statement at all so just because she's a woman let's do this or just because she is a woman let us believe her blindly let's not ask for any proof of anything whatever she is saying it's let us just believe her blindly but when a man says something we should scrutinize the man more than we would scrutinize the women so this just because statements doesn't work with me i'm not a fan of it i and i have said these things so what you're saying is that we need to look at things with nuances and look at the gray areas look at who needs the benefit who doesn't need it anymore who needs uh, you know you talking about earlier we were talking about alimonies who need the alimony who doesn't need it so those kind of conversations is so that a little later center no? yeah yeah um, let's yeah right so before we progress you know there is one question which i always want to ask you and because you are so strong in your political views uh i remember some years ago uh when this whole you know the men's rights movement started becoming more active on twitter and more and more men were speaking out on twitter there was this one notion which was you know constantly coming from the left that this is nothing to do with men's rights this is just another right wing troll army the it cell which has you know unleashed one more arm uh on twitter and uh, it is it's nothing to do about justice it's only to bash women do you really think men's rights is about this or like i can tell you personally because i run this website i get endless uh, you know messages even from the men who are supporting other ideologies men who are hardcore leftists they are also suffering the same matrimonial problems which the people on the right are suffering yeah. so do you yeah. think this is just kind yeah. of uh, a wrong person political thing or genuinely the common men who have nothing to do with politics they are the ones who are raising the voice for this yeah you know it's a very good question the couple of i mean i, I don't know i hope you have time they needs a very detailed answering uh like i said in the beginning that the the nomenclature of men's rights i do not agree with because i said 
men already have the human rights that they were supposed to have women did not get whatever little men did not that every man had all the rights there were inequalities still exist that's in the society but comparatively a uh, two a man and a woman in exactly the same position the man has a little bit more right than the women so women's rights is a is a movement is a valid movement because we are not getting the rights that men are getting now if men says that we are we also need our right it seems it sounds a little bit like you know convoluted because well you guys were getting the right you we did not get that's why we want our right like what are you talking about now it seems convoluted and confusing uh, similarly when the white men say oh white men matters white men rights or you know black lives matter white life life white lives always mattered black lives did not matter that's why we were enslaved therefore now we are saying black life matters and now you can't say white life matters you always matter we did not matter so let us matter now that's how it started so therefore the nomenclature is a problem with me but i do not believe that the the institutions groups some of the N ngos some of the right activists who are working on this field where men are facing harassment in matrimony uh are necessarily agenda driven of any kind i do believe that the ngos and the women and the and the people uh, be it men or women who started working on this area as a reaction to what has been happening which is misuse of certain women specific laws including the domestic violence law anti dowry laws um divorce issues so uh, looking at a maybe a series of these misuse or series of uh, incidents where men suffered in matrimony and did not have a did not have any platform any avenue to to you know to support for any support system and that is when as a reaction to that there are groups who came up who called themselves men rights groups um or while i would rather prefer than they could if they could find some other name for it but i do not believe that they are they, they, no i don't agree that it's just some random right wing troll on me there is there genuinely a need for this the 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 a uh, need for the work on this area because i my, in my own family i have myself seen uh, my uh, relatives uh, suffer in matrimony i have seen my own mama ji who is no more uh has suffered in his in his marriage and i personally believe when i'm saying this in public that it was his oppressive marriage that led him to his early demise you know he had an heart attack the stress that he day in and day out felt in his marriage uh, i personally feel was you know uh, responsible so i don't believe that the institutions or the organizations of the people who are working with men's rights or men who are suffering in uh, matrimony they are necessarily just trolls but like any group like for example when you know like any groups will have their own followers and then the followers will do what they want to do in twitter they may be abusing bashing being misogynist um and you can't really control people's uh, you know people uh, so so they may give you a bad name they may give a bad name to the organization which is just trying to focus on men who are you know battered uh, or suffering in marriages um so so yeah that's you know that's the short of it the system should not become a, a prison like you know the marriage should not become a prison either for the man or the woman but in india definitely uh, it is difficult for men to get a divorce they have to do if it's a contested divorce and if the women uh, is and then here's the here's the funny thing women who are not independent they do not have the, they're not working women they don't have financial independence but their family is influential let's say their family their parents have the wherewithal to pay for a lawyer's fees they will absolutely corner the man and trap him in the marriage unless he either pays a huge sum uh, they will not agree to the divorce they will say that if you if you want to leave me i'm going to file dowry cases and i'm going to file violence domestic violence cases and i have studied law i have been with lawyers i have been to the courts so i know that the first thing that the lawyer will suggest ki is pay dowry ka case dal do wo pehle hi jaate hi matlab the moment a woman approach a lawyer uh she will be advised to trap the man in some sort of a law related to dowry or domestic violence but you know the unfortunate thing is that 
Sanjukta, yeah. you raise a very good point. You know, I mean, uh, we often, you know, most of us uh, who have been in this field, whether it is men's rights, women's rights, or as you rightly said, if you are associated with the lawyers, even as friends, uh, you would know the way the laws are misused and the way the guidance is given to women to kind of, you know, extract the maximum amount that she can from the husband. So this brings me to the point is, what is your view on these false cases? Like, you know, you said it right now that, uh, you know, the first thing they'll be asked to say is for dowry case dalp. Now we know dowry harassment is a very, very serious charge, you know, and, and when, when it, you know, when the whole act was introduced in 1983, uh, you know, at, that was a time when, you know, these things were prevalent. There were cases of dowry, uh, you know, harassment, bright burning. Yeah, things did. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even today, I'm not denying that there's nothing like dowry. There will be cases which are genuine. Uh, but of course, you know, there's this whole debate also that what is dowry? Because I'll give you one example. Uh, when, say, two parties are getting married, as a mother of a daughter, I would want to give several gifts to my son-in-law, to his parents, to his family. You know, I'll be splashing, splurging all gifts on them because it's a happy moment. It's a nice, joyous occasion. Now, unfortunately, no, you know, that's not true. Not no, because it's a happy moment. No, yes. no, no, there are two aspects to it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. There are yeah. two aspects to it. So, when a marriage fails, unfortunately, these items are also accounted for as dowry, which, in my opinion, is absolutely wrong. What, in my opinion, is dowry is that where you know you're forcing a woman, you know, let's say at the time of marriage, you're like literally putting a gun on the head that itna paisa nahi to, we'll not get married. Or even after the bride comes to your house and you constantly harass her, ki car leke aao, ya ye leke aao, ya, you know, yeah. you're demanding, yeah. demanding, those things are definitely, you know, harassing for dowry. But your gifts which you are exchanging in a holy marriage, how can they be termed as dowry if the marriage fails? Yeah, so there's no, there's no answer to this question because, you know, they, these are not gifts for because you're happy, your daughter is getting married and you're splurging. It's because we have so deeply entrenched this idea of marriage being a public spectacle and splur and you know spending money and the khawa. Marriage is all about showbiz in the country. The problem lies much deeper. And if we want to change it, uh, change the uh, fix the system of these fake cases, fake dowry cases, and you know, trapping the man. You know where we have to begin? We have to begin at the very root, which is arranged marriage, where people are only getting married by looking at kiska kitna salary hai, kiski kitni uh, uh, ghar ke parivar mein kitni property hai, kya inka haisiyat hai. When you begin the association of two people uh, at, the, at the level of a transaction, it's, it's so transactional. Wedding marriages in India, arranged marriages, and we still have most arranged marriages. Love marriage is still rare in the country. Even when it's a love marriage, um, the, the, the expectation is that there would be the families will get involved. And again, the whole splurging will happen from both the sides. Both. So when we, when you, when we buy these gifts, which we buy as gifts, we are actually trying to show our status. Ki dekho, ladki walo ne itna achha achha gift diya hai. Ki ladki ko bilkul saja kar beja hai. Ideally, in a society, man and woman should decide to get married. They should make their own, own arrangements, call parents. Hamari shadi hai, mammi aa jana, aur mammi papa jo gift leke aai, usko gift ke tarah receive kar lo. Aapke pachas dost aayenge, aapke pachas family relatives log aayenge, mama, mami, chacha, chachi, sab gift leke aayenge, aur aapka gift hoga. Isme, you know, marriages should be more about to individual, not to societies, not to caste groups, not to uh, families. But we unfortunately have have got it is too rotten to even begin to talk about. Our marriage system is extremely rotten. And when when these dowry fake cases happens, you have to see that in the very beginning he apne galti kardi kyunki apne jab shadi ka decide kiya. तब आपने ये सोचकर डिसाइड किया आपसे आपने प्यार नहीं किया उस लड़की से ना ही लड़की ने आपसे प्यार किया 
आप दोनों ने शादी के लिए तैयार हो गए क्योंकि मम्मी पापा ने बोला कि लड़की अच्छी कर की है दिखने में सुंदर सी है और मॉडर्न भी है ये ट्रेडिशनल भी है तो पाओ भी दबाएगी और घर बाहर का काम भी करेगी और घर में खाना भी पकाएगी ये सब देखकर आपने शादी की और जो लड़की वाले है उन्होंने क्या देखकर शादी की भले ही थोड़ा सा बाल्ड हो भले ही थोड़ी सी टोन निकल हो सैलरी तो अच्छी है लड़के की ठीक है थोड़ा पान चबाता है पर सैलरी तो अच्छी है गाड़ी है बंगला है बारी यू नो प्रॉपर्टी है तो लड़के में थोड़ी सी अगर कमी हो भी लड़की लड़का अगर अट्रैक्टिव ना भी लगे तो भी शादी करवा दो लड़की को बोलो कि भाई तुम इसी में कर लो शादी तुम भी तो थोड़ी सी मोटी हो एडजस्ट कर लो सो वेन दीज आर आवर बिगिनिंग ऑफ आर रिलेशनशिप देन देर इज नथिंग स्टॉपिंग when when it comes to getting sour revenge from each other then the woman would use all the weapons that she has in her hand which is you know gender gender imbalance laws laws that are only you know uh, which which are does not apply to men like rape laws and other laws so of course she would use my my issue is that in all these the the women who are using the misusing the laws the women who are benefiting these laws are a minuscule small amount who are actually influential and able to take care of their own to take care of the, either they are independent themselves and still they want to trap the man out of revenge or they have a very influential family jiske father jo hai wo kehte acha ye maza lo logo ki unko humne itna matlab kharcha karke shaadi karwaya aur ab ye meri beti ko theek se rakh nahi rahe abhi main dikhata hu maza mere itne vakil dost hai mere phala jagah pe police dost hai wahan ka dp jo hai dsp jo hai wo mera dost hai abhi dikhata hu maza So you know that's what I'm trying to say. That Ruta, this number when we say minuscule, I mean there's this big debate on this because uh, you know if you look at the NCRB reports, you know the number of cases which are filed versus the acquittals. Now I'll not be very biased, but I will also say that all acquittals are not uh, that the cases were absolutely false. In some cases, there were uh, evidences which were not there, which you know couldn't kind of prove the charges. but there are cases which are open and shut false i mean there are court judgments there are orders which have clearly stated that the women uh, the wife just wanted to settle no, score no, with like that absolutely you can never deny i'm saying i'm saying the percentage is still low but even if you we have 1.3 billion people uska 1% fir bhi zyada hi hai matlab agar 1.1 billion ka bhi 1% is still a lot इतने केसेस रजिस्टर होते हैं आई एम सेइंग फ्रॉम दैट इफ यू एनालाइज द नंबर ऑफ फॉल्स केसेस और द एक्विटल्स द नंबर इज वेरी वेरी हाई सो एंड एंड यू नो आई विल एंड आई विल बी शॉक्ड टू नो यू विल बी शॉक्ड टू नो द वे दीस एफआईआरस आर लॉन्च्ड यू नो व्हेन यू नो अ वुमन सेस लाइक यू सेड आई हैव अ गुड लॉयर फ्रेंड मेरा तो यू नो आई एम अ फ्रॉम अ वेल्थी फैमिली आई हैव ऑल द लॉयर्स एट माय डोर that guy will give me literally a copy paste uh, you know application jo hoti hai for the fir yeah, there yeah, are father in law has been dead one decade ago lekin because it was a copy paste application usme father in law ka bhi naam aa gaya hai you know he was not even alive when that happened i so, you know yeah. this is the mystery which is going on which and why i'm asking you this is that every time you know uh, we raise this question that laws need to be changed and there will be this big noise from the women side saying no these laws are actually protecting the genuine victims and it's helping them so you cannot no it is not protecting the genuine the problem is this that it's not so, protecting the genuine victims yeah because if you see you know you the, the ones who are filing false cases are eating up so much time in the courts and the police so much time in the courts in who is harass that person is just going date by date in the court and not you know unfortunately i totally agree with you unfortunately it doesn't matter whether it is a big percentage small percentage the bottom line is that the cases which are going to the court which are you know even which are registered fir which are registered and going to the court that is still a small amount compared to the actual problem that the country has where women actually do suffer and they do not have access to courts and justice so these laws to be honest does not really help genuine victims whether it yeah, is yeah. Uh, you know it, like it does not really help yeah. genuine victims and and women who do misuse it they are absolutely very they are in a better position that is why they misuse and i'll tell you what i know so many and i'm sure you know there are so many women who are self respecting women they are independent working self respecting women and when it, when the marriage goes sour marriage goes bitter 
ऑल दे वॉन्ट इज यार हमें मुझे कुछ नहीं चाहिए हमें बस डिवोर्स चाहिए छुटकारा चाहिए और मेरी मेरे बच्चे का कस्टडी मुझे चाहिए तो ओनली थिंग दे गेट स्टबर नैट इज द बच्चा का कस्टडी एंड एंड देन दे जस्ट वॉन्ट टू एंड दी मैरिज एंड मूव ऑन देर आर सो मेनी वुमेन हु आर डूइंग दैट ऑफकोर्स दैट इज नॉट काउंटेड वी डू नॉट हैव एनी काइंड ऑफ सर्वे इन द कंट्री विच काउंट दीज डेटा वी डू नॉट हैव सर्वे इन आर कंट्री विच काउंट द केसेज ऑफ फॉल्स केसेस एंड देन इक्विटल लाइक यू सेड एनसीआरबी के केसेस का हमें वो मिलता है कि कितने केसेस रजिस्टर हुए बट एनसीआरबी स्टिल नॉट गिविंग अस ए डेटा ऑन फॉल्स डाउरी केसेस और फॉल्स रेप केसेस आई मीन देयर हैज टू बी अ सिस्टमेटिक सो आई नो आई एम सीइंग हम लोग लाइक वी कैन look at the data and make some estimate but the way as ncrb creates its list of data it has got a very scientific proper objective method of uh, creating that data right so ncrb itself should also create a very scientific and objective list of give us a data ki you know in every year so many cases of false uh, because like you rightly said acquittals do not necessarily mean false cases so we should have no, a data no. on which are out and out false cases where you can actually provide the proof that look this woman deliberately filed a false case and once we have that data maybe we'll be able to better understand the problem maybe we should have uh, laws like perjury we should take the issue of perjury more seriously what is perjury perjury is like yes. lying to the court not practice unfortunately it is very much absolutely not law. practice but we should take it more seriously so it's not that we do not have an option we do have an option to stop the false cases which is called perjury if you go to the court and lie in front of the court that's a serious offense so if there is a false case and then later the the, the other party the be the man or police whatever whichever party can prove that you know you deliberately lied about the whole issue that you deliberately wanted to trap the man and therefore you lied in court then it's a case of court jury and then that should be punished a false case a person who off hand i can send you 10 judgments from high courts and supreme courts where they have written in the judgment that the woman lied she filed false cases despite being documented in the order they have still awarded alimony in the name of financial security so uh, i don't know i mean this is the reason why men are so angry they are saying we have spent our entire youth our prime yeah. years in the court and at the yeah. end of it you are all the woman gets is the alimony and all the man gets is a divorce which is of no use to him so uh, you know so somewhere i think these false cases need to be curbed and false uh, cases definitely need to be curbed even the case of uh i have a huge issue i have written articles on this i have a huge issue about the rape on false pretext of marriage i mean yeah. that's just the most ridiculous kind of allegation that you can bring that you had you fell in love you had sex consensual sex because you were in love and you thought we will get married hamara ghar hoga bachche honge and then the marriage then the relationship breaks and you call it a rape i mean that's just not done there is no such thing as sex in the false pretext of marriage because sex is not an object that you can give and take it's something that two people do together it's an act of consensual love and when you are doing it you are in love that love cannot be conditioned ki kal ko shaadi hogi isiliye pyar hai ye nahi hota hai pyar hai shaadi ho bhi sakti hai nahi bhi ho sakti hai lekin aapka pyar hai isliye aap even if you see you know at work places you know they say uh, you know sex on pretext of uh, job or promotion or in bollywood they would say sex on pretext of getting a film offered uh, i mean that itself is absurd because you are consenting as a woman to something in favor of something now if that contract or that uh, yeah, agreement no. is not signed by uh, i don't mm, know can be there is a slight there is a slight disagreement you it changes the 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 context changes when there is a power structure when the man is in a position of able to give you something that you want a job a film deal a book deal anything that is you need i mean the but no but no but therefore that is why when it comes to marriage you should not apply the same rule marriage should not be seen as like something like a job i mean you know like as a woman i would only want to marry someone for love I should not be looking at a man and thinking कि इससे प्यार कर लेती हूँ और इसको शादी कर लेती हूँ तो मेरी जिंदगी सेट हो जाएगी 
if i'm thinking that way and then he is not marrying me and then i'm going and saying that i it's a marriage in the text rape in the text of marriage that is where it's all wrong i i you should not a woman should not be looking at the idea of marriage as some kind of a reward that she is getting while in the movie industry it's it's a it's something that you're getting you it's a movie deal it's a role it's a job it's any in any other context where the man has a decision making power when he has the power to take a decision regarding your application or your uh, audition let's say then you cannot apply the same rule then you say then if you even if you are even if i'm consenting to the sex it's still some kind of an exploitation because i know that if i don't say yes he will not give me this role or he will not give me this promotion or this job but that does not apply to i mean that's a choice like i may want something very very desperately now as an adult it's my choice up to what extent i want to compromise for that and if i'm willing to compromise to any extent and after that also i'm not getting it can i strike back as revenge saying this was rape uh, it, it is a little conflicting like if you compare no. it to the absolute you know the hardcore real cases of rape gang rape that we're talking about Versus, you have the problem is no you see you know, so here's the problem as a woman maybe you are willing to compromise and you did compromise but the man should then know that he's taking a risk because it's a power structure the man should be careful of I getting into these relations these laws are in a way to keep men in check and but then we are empowering the women to act but only in the but my but i will only concede in the case of where it is a power structure not in the case where it's just two couple two people in love and then the few days later the woman says it's a rape because he did not marry me i'm saying when yeah. you are entering in so many women dump their boyfriends i mean there are n number of women yeah so many that. women dump their boyfriends the boyfriend is not going to say na ki mera to rape ho gaya i mean it's just ridiculous oh, so oh, in india is and and i personally feel there should be no recourse to anybody because if the other person doesn't want to get married i don't think you can force yeah that's the married. whole point i mean the whole point is see all of these rates is sexual harassment law at workplace or these other laws these are these are made in the assumption that women is weak and that women will always take uh, advantage of women uh, and women will never take advantage of men apparently it that's not true women do take advantage of men a woman and you know like the sexual harassment at workplace law when it came out and ever since it has come out i have said this i have spoken about this openly in public that i believe that uh that the law should have been gender neutral because in the workplace there is very high chances that a woman boss would take advantage of a male employee it happens all the time but the male employees actually do not have a recourse where he is uh, being asked to do something for the woman boss uh, if he wants a promotion so in the workplace this law should have been gender neutral in when it comes to rape laws rape laws are not gender neutral i don't whether they should be gender neutral or not let's debate that at a later point it's a very larger debate the word rape because in a lot of foreign jurisdictions you use the word sex, sex, sexual exploitation of the man so even if you are talking about you know uh, i mean because the whole concept is if you can't penetrate you can't rape so therefore the woman can't rape a man but that doesn't mean that she can't sexually exploit the man so you know it's somewhere we need to bring these things and kind of make it gender neutral for both the parties and this is the same uh, point of argument even in the marital rape pil which is going on because uh, you know the one side which is uh, asking to criminalize marital rape they are saying the men can't uh, be the sufferers in marriage you know when it comes to sex which is very very yeah. funny you know i mean why can't a husband be sexually exploited by his wife it yeah so these again like you know so the, the gender the gender neutrality of these law particularly rape law and the marital rape law it's a very complicated debate i don't really have enough uh, you know knowledge or data to talk about it but i would definitely say that we should not have we should have, uh, remove this particular clause from the rape laws which says marriage in the pretext of uh, uh, sorry sex in the pretext of marriage or on promise of marriage and ev- and so many high courts have given these decisions which is so problematic where the woman has a claim that she, there was a rape because there was no marriage and then the high court actually gave the judgment in favor of it this actually does 
nothing but uh, uh, makes women a desexual uh, being as if women do not need sex as if sex is something only man needs and women give and only gives yeah. because because i am going to get something in return which is what marriage or job or now okay if it's a power structure i can still understand that the man has to be in check even when a woman is maybe you know willing to offer herself you have to be so careful I, because absolutely yeah. i'm saying if he's exploiting her yeah so even if a woman is offering you as a man uh, because she knows that you know maybe you know you will she'll be able to seduce you and he'll be able to get some good promotion the man should be in be more professional and you know keep a distance and be more careful so yeah because the women can always use that because there's a power structure however not in not when there are just two equal people two individuals trying to get into a relationship so there you go you know rape half of the rape cases which happens are like this in mean, these falls rape right. cases that you hear is yeah. actually yeah. not yeah. ियन women can't say a few things or women find it difficult to say no i mean i in that sense i am a little bit more radical when it comes to feminism so i'm like no women have to be tough and tough enough and women have to be able to more you know be more vocally if it's no if, if you want to say no say no and if you can't say no then don't let her on say oh i didn't want to do it but i still had to say yes because i was scared blah 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 again alimony is uh, something which is very debatable nowadays uh, i have different notions i am not saying that you should completely strike down alimony because different situations will demand different uh, you know ways to take care of your partner now if you look at a short lived marriage so parties getting married let's say they are 28 30 years of age both of them are getting married whatever love marriage arranged marriage now today's times are so different that you know within 6 months or sometimes even in 3 months you realize you are not compatible okay you just can't live with each other and you want to get out of this now yeah. unfortunately what are alimony or the maintenance let's not talk about alimony also let's talk about the maintenance laws so there is a section 125 crpc and it's for everybody okay irrespective of the personal laws it is applicable to all religions it says right. that even as a woman you are married for one single day you can choose to claim maintenance from your husband for the rest of your life till you are alive or you get remarried okay there are some other riders also but in most cases we see that uh, the woman has to just go and file an application in the court they will ask both the parties tum kitna kama rahe ho whether the woman is earning not earning and basis that they fix the maintenance amount so what is happening is in short lived marriages women are saying we can't stay with you we are leaving even if the woman is educated she will go back to her parents house she'll just go and file an application and even even she will not consent to divorce you know she will say without divorcing you you have to pay me maintenance so now the man is stuck for the rest of his life he has to even pay somebody who he is not even living with or getting love or emotional or any other support from that woman so this is a big problem when it comes to alimony of course when it comes to uh, you know the longer duration marriages where children are involved and all those are also debatable factors you know uh, whether we can have some timelines because you can't say that okay for lifelong you will pay her alimony right or, or maintenance like in other countries if you see you know they look at the duration in marriage even if you are say married for 5 years so are you saying if i'm married to somebody for 5 years i have to pay her maintenance for the rest of my life or you will say okay 5 years chalo give her maintenance for another 5 years or another 3 years let's yeah. go back to professional life you know because you the idea is to make her independent as a naked divorce ho gaya matlab life khatam ho gayi and you know as a woman you become handicapped you can't do anything in your life so these are the problems with maintenance alimony laws and uh, I, i don't know yeah, how you, I, you I completely agree on the short term marriage like short marriages uh, issue that you said I completely agree with it doesn't make sense I mean maintenance for what and so particularly if there is no children involved 
i can still understand that the man uh, let's say the children are small and they are with the woman and she is the guardian now she is the um, legal guardian so he should yeah. he should still be taking care of their uh, you know educational uh, children's education children school children's jo ki bachcho ka jo kharch hota hai to wo us pe he should definitely still because it's in the father he should still have some sort of a contribution but if there is no child and if the marriage was just let's say 6 months or 1 year and the, because in 6 months or 1 year of marriage does not make a big dent into in the woman's career if she wants to go back to her earning her uh, job she can go back 5 years if she gets if she takes a big break of 5 years and let's say she got married and she was a housewife for 5 years now the the world has moved on she doesn't know where the new you know she's not able to compete with the latest the later generations then i can still understand that uh, she may need you know some kind of uh, maintenance support or ideally you know ideally what is what should happen for me i believe is that there should be some kind of a property share because when when a family lives together when a husband and wife lives together for 5 years 10 years the the things that they build the house the car the घर के सामान या जो भी दोनों ने मिलकर बनाया इवन दो इट वॉज सिंगल अर्निंग इवन दो इट वॉज जस्ट दसबेंड वॉज अर्निंग बट बिकॉज शी वॉज मैनेजिंग द हाउस होल्ड शी वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ द फैमिली ही वुड नॉट बी एबल टू डू इट अ लोन विदाउट हर सपोर्ट एंड देर फोर द मैट्रीमोनियल होम देर शी शुड हैव सम राइट इन दैट इन दैट होम इधर यू सेल ऑफ द होम गिव हर अ शेयर इन दैट आई एम नॉट इवन सेंग फिफ्टी फिफ्टी usually these days like in the western context the husband's property everything gets you know divided 50 50 in the But western there property there you will also account for the woman's property so let's say if she is in it will also account like exactly it will also account for the woman's property women's salary mm-hmm. when the mm-hmm. woman is a high earning member of the family her salary would be taken into consideration when it comes to the divorce settlements uh, then you have the prenups you if you are rich people and you know you have this chances of getting divorced you पहले से डिसाइड कर लो कि जब हमारा डिवोर्स होगा तो किसका क्या प्रॉपर्टी होगा ये पहले से सोच लो आई मीन दीज आर आइडियल वेज मेंटेनेंस सीम्स अ वेरी टू बी ऑनेस्ट टू टू अ सेल्फ रिस्पेक्टिंग फेमिनिस्ट मेंटेनेंस सीम वेरी ऑफेंसिव टू मी आई मीन आई डोंट नीड मेंटेनेंस हेलो या यू नो टू अ वुमन लाइक व्हाई कांट यू मेंटेन योरसेल्फ आई मीन व्हाई यू मेंटेनेंस सीम्स एक्सट्रीमली प्रॉब्लमेटिक टू मी uh it's offensive it sees women as this burden like you are a burden first you were a burden on the father then you were a burden on the husband now the husband is rode you out but he still should take you as a burden because you are apparently useless on your own but that's not true women could like you know many most women these days who go through the whole this process of ordeal of divorce they can they i mean get back to job whatever but that's why i said that fine give her a property and from that property maybe she will be able to do something out of that property she will be able to maintain oh, her oh, life whatever arrangement that you can have so that you know she can rebuild her life because she can be good or and in fact women should have in in fact women yeah, like should also have a right in their father's property i mean ye bhi to ek problem hai na ki jo father hai Law. that is very much there in the law but when it comes to the father's side the women are okay to accept that kind of patriarchy where the share only goes to the brother and not to her yeah well, that's also a problem but in the case of fathers also stop doing that shaadi ho na ho jo bhi aapka property hai usme bhai behan dono ko share de do jo technically banta hai jo desh ka kanun hai us hisab se ladki ko kahin na kahin se to kuch na kuch property mil hi jayegi right even if let's say like i am i never married i am a single woman forever right so i and i'm 46 i have never married who is going to maintain me because i don't have a husband i am either going to earn my own living and i would always you know as and when my father goes passes away there would the property will buy automatically as per the law devolve on two sisters we are two sisters it will devolve on the two of us so That's just so natural. But हमारा क्या है the whole business तुमको तो शादी करवा दिया है तो तुम्हें आप तुम्हें तो दहेज में दे दिया सारा कुछ अब तो जो बचा वो भाई का होगा and then when she gets a divorce from the husband she is like nowhere to you know she has nothing on her hand 
सो स्टॉप डूइंग दैट लाइक दैट्स व्हाई आई सेड यू नो ये सारी जो हमारी कॉन्वर्सेशन जो जेंडर वॉर नहीं है इट्स नॉट अ जेंडर वॉर इट्स अ प्रॉब्लम of the entire system that we have built around marriage family property everything has to is the asset but this Why? maintenance business is i don't think self respecting women should be looking for maintenance um except for children's education children's chin bachcho ka school fee hoga bachcho ka you know that that should be completely a different category you know when it comes that to should be completely a different category yeah that should be calculated differently ji ki but Uh, the calculation of how much a child needs you know they can like kill each other in the courts but children ka jo hai usko you just keep it separate usko alag rakho ha aur bitti ka dono ki taraf se if the both the parents are earning then both the parents should contribute towards the children's um upbringing and uska ek alag hi account hona chahiye alag hi calculation hona chahiye to yeah agree on you on supreme court order that clearly said both earning parents should have a shared responsibility of the children ऐसे नहीं है कि बोथ ऑफ यू आर अर्निंग बट ओनली द फादर विल टेक केयर सो आई थिंक वी आर मूविंग इन द राइट डायरेक्शन बट इट विल टेक मेनी मेनी इयर्स बट इट विल टेक मेनी मेनी इयर्स एंड एवरीथिंग हैज टू चेंज द कोर्ट एवरी कोर्ट विल गिव यू दिस प्रॉब्लमेटिक जजमेंट्स माय मैसेज टू द मेंस राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट इज दैट व्हेन यू डू दिस एंड लाइक आई इन द बिगिनिंग सेड आई एब्सोल्युटली अंडरस्टैंड द नीड फॉर प्लेटफॉर्म्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस टू वर्क फॉर मेंस राइट्स work for men who are oppressed in marriage facing domestic violence i personally know men who face domestic violence physical violence mental violence within their marriage from their wives there is a need to work on that but there is also a need to question the entire institution of arranged marriage which somehow still benefits the men more still benefits men more because we have not changed gender stereotypes we encourage girls to be more like boys but we still do not encourage boys to be like girls the entire concept of masculinity and femininity is still so dichotomized and there is no blurring the line so bachcha jab hota hai bachpan mein ladki ke liye to pehle hum bachpan mein barbi doll leke aate the aur bachche aur ladke jo hai unke liye he man aur spider man aur tank and guns leke aate the gifts mein aajkal ladkiyon ko ke liye bhi hum gaariyan lekar aa rahe hain plane lekar aa rahe hain unko bhi encourage kar rahe hain ki pilot ban sakte ho aur space ban uh, you know space woman ban sakte ho kalpana chawla ban sakte ho lekin even today you would not gift a barbi doll to the boy because that would be seen as deeply offensive right even today you would not get a kitchen set to the boy agar kisi maa ka bacche ka birthday ho raha hai ladka hai aap kitchen set lekar nahi jaoge kyunki aaj bhi wo gender stereotype wo kitchen set jo hai wo aaj bhi ladke ke liye so let me tell you, let me finish so therefore he arranged marriage is still seen is still done on the parameters of how much she will adjust within the family how, whether she will respect the elders well she whether she will take care of both her job as well as balance the idea of balancing the work and the home is still more on the woman she can do everything like you know the men are not expected to do both ki ghar mein aake khana bhi bana raha hai aur bahar ja ke job bhi kar raha hai lekin ladki pe mahila pe fir bhi wo bojh padta hai and most of the arranged marriages in upper societies upper class up middle class women are not even working because the husband is working enough 20% is work participation rates in our country which has gone down from 36% in the last 10 years because the middle class has become a little bit comfortable and the moment they become comfortable the women don't feel the need to do a job because she is taking care of the household because she has been trained to think that this is the larger role i'm playing in the society raising my children in a better way quitting my job so and the and who is getting the benefit the benefit is getting the capitalist society and the arranged marriage system and the patriarchal system which is still prioritizing the men you know so we have to change question that is the big thing as yeah you, well, you know when we were talking on this uh, issue of uh, women are we can give them guns and you know other things now as gifts or as toys to play yeah, but yeah. for you know we are still not comfortable giving them a kitchen set now i'll give you the perspective from the men side or whatever i you know keep hearing and whatever feedback i get is that the first question whenever they go for an arranged marriage what is the first question which is asked to a man kitna kamata hai okay so kitna kamata hai the whole idea of a man is not about himself or his personality he, whether he is a good human being not sabse pehla uska jo price tag hai ki kitna kamata hai so if that is the whole objective then naturally from childhood you know 
people will ask him to focus on his career people are going to tell him ki bhai agar tumne acha nahi kiya you'll not get a good girl or you'll not you know nobody will marry you absolutely to ye bhi to hame change karna hai na on the other side we are telling our daughters we are telling them you be absolutely independent do whatever you want don't step into the kitchen this is not your job so kahin na kahin ye ho raha hai that after that such a marriage takes place jo ladki hai she has gone to another level you know she is saying i am independent i am not even going to step into the kitchen whereas the men they have not graduated you know they are still put in that box of being a provider you know have you ever seen an arranged marriage or any marriage where you know the woman says oh i want to marry somebody who's earning less than me i mean there will be cases but there will be very few cases in that sense so when you know the whole system expects the man to be the sole provider even the other thing let's say even if both of them are earning or both of them are working while they get married the woman always has an option of quitting her job whenever she wants i know so many women they say meko to boss ke sath nahi jam raha i am uh, not going to take a shit anymore i am resigning but can a man actually do that can he overnight say i am resigning without thinking 100 times that who is going to take care of the house the kids yeah. the family so there is this imbalance you know when we talk about there is it's absolutely not- this imbalance like that's why i say the entire gender stereotype of masculinity and femininity is equally oppressive to the men because men cannot do what they want to do because they have to be the provider so that is why i say that when we question about these things we have to hit at the very bottom of that system we have to hit at that very system which has created this gender stereotype then we have to tell the girls that look even if you are independent and all of that if you are getting into a marriage the marriage has some responsibilities please take be more responsible towards the family towards your marriage it's not like you know you you can't be brash you cannot be you cannot be like you know uh, reckless with your life or your marriage you know so so when we tell the girls that yes you be independent but independent doesn't mean you have to be rash and reckless and and thoughtless towards other people's feelings that's not what empowerment is you still have when the moment you decide to get married you have to know that marriage has responsibilities there are responsibilities from your side there are responsibilities from your man side the woman should ideally you know you know you know in in the world that i would want to see women should not have a problem if the man decides that can you take care of the household for can you take care of the family for like a month or so or like a year or so i want to take a break and pursue my uh, hobby of painting you know if a man says that i want to take a break i want to pursue my painting as hobby the woman would be like what kind of man you are no the woman should be accommodative of a man's you know diverse choices in life and not see him as a provider but the begin- where will it begin it has to begin at our own families with our own children we have to question the entire system of arranged marriages where the two families think that this is the man has to be provider the woman have to be the nurturer so you know the nurturer and provider this entire dichotomy has to be broken so i i am absolutely in uh, in agreement that these ideas that the man cannot quit, uh, suddenly quit his job he has to keep suffering i just feel sanjuk that it's all about personal choices and i also completely believe that you know this whole norm like you know acha you come to t you still not married i mean this these mindsets have to change you can't be like a cattle both men and uh, women you know ki acha itna ho gaya jaldi se shaadi kara do and that is like the end of your life i think that's the worst exactly uh, exactly and arnas i believe that you i mean no i see your tweets these days and i am i did see some of the people say that oh she's a fake men rights activist like there's a, <laughs> like there's a fake feminist allegation some of us get now there is a fake men rights activist because of course what you're saying is there is no disagreement there is no gender wars what we both are saying is is the same thing that we have to we have to first of all prioritize the individual in ye sari baaton mein na hum ye sare cheezon mein hum jo bhool jate hain wo ye hai ki har insaan alag hai har individual alag hai har individual ke needs alag hai be it a man be it a woman every individual is different so a woman can be very uh, you know mean 
she could be oppressive she could be uh, she can have her own uh, agenda to trap the man in the marriage and uh, eat a lot of money from him uh, us pe false case at the same time you know a man can be extremely exploitative a man can be you know a man who's sitting in a power position could be you know sexually harassing women all of these are possible because individuals are different 7 billion people in the world are all different and the mistake we make is that we try to understand everything as with identities women matlab bas yahi men matlab bas ho gaya the moment your identity is settled and your fate is settled you can't do anything anymore one advice to women is that you know and i i well so women is a very large category right there are different various kinds of women but i'm assuming the audience to your program or your channel uh, in our context our kind of our women like us ours right so urban educated independent women my advice would be really to not fall into this narrative of constant uh, victim mode and constant narrative of that we are we are victims because we are weak and because you know it is difficult for us to to say uh, to to muster up to muster up courage and say things i mean it's i don't know if i'm able to put it correctly i come across these cases after cases when this me too movement happened and even now it with uh, you know it comes out so much where women years later say i was abused i was um you know this thing happened to me so to some some of these cases are very very genuine no doubt but to some extent i would give the advice that do not fall into this narrative that women can't say no and women just uh, are too weak to say resist a violence or or you know come out of a violent situations and um, therefore they must give in and later on they realize that oh mere sath violence hua so i think i think we are creating a trope where women are just getting comfortable into their victimhood roles it's just very controversial a statement people will hate me for saying this but i feel it needs to be somebody needs to say this truth that you know try to try to break out of these notions of you know what did somebody do to you what somebody did some bad to you what happened in the past what happened in this marriage how much your husband uh, you know oppressed you in the marriage end the marriage move on you know end your past break out from your past get up and move on i think that is one message that is like get up pull your socks move on and it's not accepted these days apparently i'm not supposed to tell women these days uh, to pull up your socks and move on because that is then gaslighting that is then telling her not to feel the way she wants to feel like if you if a woman just wants to feel like she is the victim and she just wants to cry over it i should let her feel that and if i tell her that there is no need to cry you're not like that much of a victim itna kya ho gaya tumhare life mein theek to aisa kuch if i say that it is called gaslighting it is a big crying these days to get to do gaslighting for men the number one advice is you start questioning patriarchy and myths and the gender stereotypes because it is very offensive to men also it's not just the women who are suffering under the system of patriarchy under the system of arranged marriages which are transactional under the system when you go for a marriage tell your parents that that is not what i'm going to look for in a woman i am going to see the woman meet her spend some time with her and judge her on her character and her parameters as to whether she is a self independent woman or not i mean try to gaze her that ki aisa lagta hai ki agar shaadi tutegi to kal ko ye aapke ko direct dowry case kar degi kya wo is tarah ki ladki lagti hai aapko ki wo kal ko ye ghum ke aap pe case kar degi agar nahi lagti hai to mat karo shaadi chahe kitna bhi dahej mil raha ho chahe wo kitni bhi khoobsurat ho you know so instead of looking for things like is she a virgin or not is she pretty or not is her parents rich or not you should men should start going for marriages which are really a genuine marriage of 
यू नो टू पीपल गेटिंग इन टू अ लविंग अफेयर एंड नॉट जस्ट डू कि भैया पच्चीस साल शादी छब्बीस साल हो गया है नौकरी भी लग गई है मम्मी मेरी शादी करवा दो घर में बीवी आ जाएगी तो फ्री का सेक्स भी मिल जाएगा खाना भी मिल जाएगा बना बनाया तो यू नो नॉट दैट लाइक मेन शुड कम आउट ऑफ दैट नोशन वेर मैरिज इज अ वेरी कन्वीनियंट थिंग फॉर देम as we, of course for women also marriage has been a convenient institution for both the parties that is how the whole institution has been surviving for thousands of years because we just divided the role ye kamayega tum pakaogi you know we divided this thing and we created an oppressive system so now it's time to for the men to also question the entire concept of what is a marriage why do we get married why do i want to get married to this woman just because my parents say it just because it's time to get married or because i fell in love with a woman so you know love and i'm not saying that there's no problem in love marriages but even when you do a love marriage pehle se so baatein kar lo ye sari so sanjukta what is our take home today is that let both the genders introspect uh, you know how uh, we can change and there's no point in crying victim from both sides uh, there's no end to it we can keep doing that for the rest of our lives and uh, things are not going to change but i think uh, you know if both are at two different extremes uh, we need to kind of converge at a middle point one can't say that i'm too rigid i'm not going to you know make any amendments and the otherwise you know the other person also has to kind of make adjustments so maybe that is the crux of today's discussion what uh, we have uh, done for such a long time yeah and everyone who is watching you know i must tell you something about sanjukta uh that you know she will have her own ideologies her own political takes and everything and but when it comes to feminism i think she will stand up for women wherever th- she thinks is right unlike a lot of people whom we see on twitter who claim to be feminists but uh, they take very selective positions depending on which government is in power or uh, which religion it is pertaining to unlike that i have seen many instances where sanjukta has not looked at any other aspect but particularly stood up for women if it is uh, in the right sense so thank you so much for joining us today sanjukta it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you and thank i think you we so should much. have you know more of these kind of exchanges so that we are not living in our own bubbles at all point of time yeah and i would just like to like you know add a little bit to what you uh, summarize i would specifically say that yes why every issue can be solved when both sides become a little bit flexible both sides find a middle ground that is a given that's not even a rocket science we just know that if everybody could get into dialogues we can solve all our problems the world's problems but in our case what the discussion we had today i would specifically tell that women need to feminists must start you know acknowledging the idea that yes there are lots and lots of women who do abuse the laws that exist for women safety and women's uh, equality but they are misused that we law domestic violence laws are misused it's just a reality that we are closing our eyes to we don't even want to talk about it we don't even want to hear it we have to start talking about it we have to you know talk to the other side which is let's say in this case men's rights activists with that respect that they are also doing something that they believe in them. they will they are actually handling cases where really men have support and that's just a that's just their job they're doing it as a as a as a you know as their cause it's their cause so there is no war in it and at the same time specifically i will tell the men that feminism is never the problem the problem is the system that we live in the world the system which has been there for thousands of years and and women had to come out and start the the movement called feminism because men had certain rights from the get go from when democracy started every men got the right to vote women did not men got right to education women did not so therefore women had to start feminism manism or men's right was not ideally needed ideally we should have human rights we should all move towards human rights and men shouldn't have to have spe- separately fight over it because it's not really a systematic problem that has been there for thousands of 
years. However, in the recent years, we have seen there are cases, and you obviously will have to take care of those cases. But men, when they talk about those issues, must also address at the same time the entire concept of. what is it to be a man what is it to be a woman what are man's role in a marriage woman's role in a marriage transactional marriage unequal marriage all of that because they harm the man also it's not just the woman that we fight so when we fight feminists and even the real feminists are someone like me the real feminists will always even stand up for the man when the man is being abused i would always it's not just that i am only going to stand up for the woman i am going to stand up for the men also when i really see a genuine case of women of men suffering in a marriage or even otherwise in a relationship you know things like that so yeah so specificity is important and <laughs> everything is not subjective in the world so we have to be objective and truthful to you know all our conversations so thank you and yes we must have these kind of dialogues i at the cost of boasting really seem to be the only person who is willing to have these conversations few days back i had a similar interview with to a uh, right wing they you know i am a hardcore liberal uh, li leftist but they were the right wing uh, youtubers and they had a interview with me again they said like you're the only one who is willing to talk so i'm like yeah i am definitely very willing to talk because somebody have to have these dialogues in between and not live in polarized world in our own communities and constantly blame each other you know so yeah so thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to putting across my views right now we we had a wonderful candid conversation sanjukta and i thank you very much as you rightly thank said you have been one of the first persons who has been so vocal about it who represents the women's rights and i really thank you for uh, coming and sharing your thoughts with us thank you so much mm -hmm.